Hello friends, this video on tissues part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have got a good amount of idea about what are epithelial tissues, it is a good time that we start with the various types of epithelial tissue. Now, there are various types of epithelial tissues which are present. Now, how have we classified epithelial tissue? We have classified epithelial tissue based on the structure of the epithelial tissue. Now, broadly epithelial tissue is classified into two types, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. So these are the two main classifications of epithelial tissue, simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. So what is a simple epithelium? Again, if the name is simple, it is going to be something simple, right? So simple epithelium means it will consist of only one layer. So a single layer epithelium is simple epithelium so simple means single but whenever we have multiple layers of cells then we have stratified epithelium so this is an epithelial tissue right so the tissue consists of cells so simple epithelium will have a single layer of cells but stratified epithelium will have multiple layer of cells so, so on this basis, whether they have single layer or uh, multiple layers, they are classified as simple epithelium and stratified epithelium. Now in simple epithelium, we have three types that is simple squamous, simple cuboidal and simple columnar. So these three types are on the basis of the shape of the cells. So depending upon the shape and size of the cells, they have been categorized into these three types. Similarly, under stratified, we have three types that is stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal and pseudo stratified columnar. Right. So now we will discuss about each of them in detail one by one. So here I'm not discussing about all of them because that will create confusion. So we will start with the first one that is the simple squamous epithelium. Now one interesting thing which we will notice that now each of these types of epithelium are present in specific places. So now we will come to know why a particular type of epithelium is present in a particular location. So that will also have a logic behind it. Right. So let us start with simple squamous epithelium. So let us now talk about simple squamous epithelium. So as I said, simple epithelium will always have a single layer. So it is a single layer of thin, flat, plate-like structures. So they are called squamous. So squamous, the word squamous is for flat, plate-like structures. So now as you can see in this picture, so they are a single layer. So it is a very thin layer. So you can have an idea of the thickness from this. So this much is the thickness. So thin, flat, plate-like structure. So it looks somewhat like plate, right? So where do we find these kind of um, simple squamous epithelium? We'll see that. So in this case, the nucleus is flattened and oblong. So generally, the nucleus also in these kind of epithelium is kind of flattened because the uh, cells are also flat, plate-like, right? So since the cells are flat, so the nucleus are also to some extent flattened. They are found in the lining of cavities like mouth, esophagus, heart, lungs. So they are generally found in the lining of these kind of organs. Right. Now the question is why this thin and flat structures are found in such locations. Now if you have a look at these places which we, I have talked about whether it is mouth or esophagus or heart or lungs, lungs at all these locations Transport of substance takes place through a selectively permeable membrane, right? Whether it is mouth. In mouth, the intake of food takes place. So that means through a membrane, transport of substances take place. If we talk about lungs, in lungs also, the absorption of oxygen takes place. So the transport takes place through a semi-permeable membrane, right? Now, these thin and flat uh, structures will be helpful in trans transportation of substances. That's because let us suppose if you have 
a thick structure let us suppose if this is a thick structure and you have some substances which are to be transported through this boundary and on the other hand you have a thin structure like this and in this case you have to transport these substances through this boundary which is easier do you think this is easier right because when you want the transfer of materials to take place across a boundary so that should be thin and flat that makes it better so that is why this thin flat epithelium that is the simple squamous epithelium is present in locations where transport of substances takes place through a selectively permeable membrane and I am sure you know what is selectively permeable by now because we have spoken about it in detail while we were talk while we were learning the lesson on cell. Selectively permeable means it knows which substances to allow and which substances not to allow right. So that is all about simple squamous epithelium. So it is also found in the outer layer of skin because outer layer of skin also is used for like for example we pour water right sometimes something happens on our skin and we apply medicine so everything has to be transported inside so there also transfer of material has to take place so the outer layer of skin is also made up of the simple squamous epithelium. It offers very little protection, allows passage of materials. Now, why it offers little protection? Because it is very thin and flat. So, it, it itself is very delicate, right? So, when it is itself so delicate, it cannot provide much protection. However, it allows passage of materials. So, the passage of materials is the major function which this kind of epithelium performs. Let us now look at the next type of simple epithelium that is simple cuboidal epithelium. Now here again the term cuboidal will tell you something, not something in fact a lot about this kind of epithelium. Cuboidal means something in the shape of a cuboid, right? We all know what is a cuboid, something like this, correct? Okay, so these are single layer of cube shaped cells because again simple epithelium so single layer cuboidal therefore cube shaped cells where are they found they are found in the lining of kidney tubules and ducts of salivary glands so these are the places where these kind of epithelium are found so if you look at the picture you can get an idea about how they look so if you see small small cubes arranged together to form this simple cuboidal epithelium now what is the purpose of i mean why are they present in kidney tubules and salivary glands so there has to be a reason and the reason is that this kind of epithelium helps in absorption as well as secretion. So secretion, when I talk of secretion, I am talking about salivary glands, the glands which secretes saliva. So these kind of epithelium are good for absorption, so they can absorb materials and it is also good for secretion. So when I talk of absorption, you can think of kidney tubules. Because kidney tubules helps in absorption and transportation of substances which are filtered by the kidney. What is the purpose of kidney? Kidney actually does filtration, right? It cleans out things. So after filtration, whatever substances come out, so the kidney tubules actually helps in absorption of those substances, right? Now since absorption and secretion are the two specialities of these kind of epithelium, so that is why they are present in kidney tubules and salivary glands. They also provide mechanical support. Now since this simple cuboidal epithelium is little stronger as compared to the simple squamous epithelium, so they can provide some support also. For example, the previous one I said that since it was itself very thin and flat structure, itself it was very delicate, therefore simple squamous epithelium was not giving much protection, but here it can give some mechanical support. It offers some protection, mostly helpful in secretion and absorption and that is why these are present in such places. But it protects, it gives some protection, at least better than the simple squamous epithelium, right? So now you are understanding how each type of epithelium has a specific purpose, like the simple squamous epithelium, what is the main purpose? 
passage of materials for simple cuboidal what is the main purpose absorption and secretion right let us now look at the third type that is the simple columnar epithelium so here again as the name suggests it is a single layer of tall pillar like cells the word columnar is derived from column column means something like this we talk about rows and columns right columns means something which is tall something which is like a pillar so these are single layer of tall pillar like cells so you can see that clearly in this picture so you see they are tall cells right so they offer little more protection compared to squamous and cuboidal epithelium that is quite evident from their structure now let us suppose now you can compare it like this let us suppose if you have some organ here so if you have this epithelium you see because of its tall height it can provide lot more protection right when compared to the flat epithelium flat epithelium would have been up to here itself right so the flat epithelium will not be able to give much protection i'll give you a practical example let us suppose you are traveling from one place to another and you have some glass bowls to carry with you so you would have often seen your moms that when they pack suitcases what do they do they do not just keep the glass bowl simply inside the suitcase what they do they generally try to wrap it with some cloth or they try to wrap it with some tissue paper or with a towel like thing so that they give some cushioning effect to that glass because the glass is a very delicate object so it can break down any moment a little bit of pressure comes from any end right so what do they do they wrap it in some soft material so that it gets some cushioning effect and does not break so similar is the thing here in this case also the columnar epithelium since they are tall pillar like cells so they give more cushioning effect so they can give more protection when compared to the squamous epithelium which is very flat and delicate itself so since it is itself delicate so it cannot give protection the cuboidal one little better than the squamous epithelium right so here giving protection becomes a major function it also specialize in secretion and absorption so it is also present in at places where things are secreted or things are absorbed so where do we see this it is found in the inner lining of the intestine because even in case of intestine also absorption of nutrient takes place because intestine plays a very important role in digestion right now when the food gets digested what happens is the nutrients from the food has to be absorbed so during that absorption these kind of simple columnar epithelium really helps now in simple columnar epithelium okay also when i talk about this intestine thing there is another thing which i need to talk now when i talk of intestine the in, why is it present in the intestine if absorption is the only purpose in intestine then why do we need simple columnar epithelium we could have uh, placed simple cuboidal epithelium the thing is that in case of intestine the intestine needs protection as well as absorption right so when you need absorption and secretion along with protection then you need simple columnar because the simple cuboidal epithelium cannot give much protection now why the intestine needs protection now the intestine needs protection against undesirable substances like bacteria because bacteria if bacteria or any other such microbes enter your intestine they can cause problems with your health right so they can cause problem with the digestion they can cause stomach infection right so they can disbalance the body so that means the intestine needs protection at the same time the intestine wants to absorb the nutrients from food so the intestine needs protection plus absorption so that is why we have simple columnar epithelium and not cuboidal epithelium in this case right okay so now when i am talking about simple columnar epithelium i would also like to talk about a special kind of simple columnar epithelium which is ciliated columnar epithelium so this special type of simple columnar epithelium is mostly present in the respiratory tract
So what is a ciliated columnar epithelium? That means a simple columnar epithelium with hair-like structures on its outer surface. So these hair-like structures are known as cilia. We have spoken about cilia in our previous lesson while we were talking about amoeba, paramecium and all, right? So what are cilia? Cilia are the hair-like structures. So small hair-like structures which are present on the outer surface of the epithelial cells. So now if the cilia are present on the outer surface of columnar epithelium, then that epithelium is known as ciliated columnar epithelium. Now the question is how this addition of cilia helps. So how the ciliated epithelium actually helps in the respiratory tract. So this is how a ciliated epithelium looks like. See, the columnar epithelium earlier was like this. So these are the columnar cells. And here you see these structures. So these are the cilia. Right? So therefore, this is known as ciliated columnar epithelium. Correct? Okay. So now how this ciliated columnar epithelium actually helps in the respiratory tract. So if it is present, how will it actually help? <coughs> Now, what happens in the respiratory tract? Respiratory, what is, now I will not get inside the detail of the structure of the respiratory tract, but just to explain you, just imagine what happened during respiration. We breathe in, we breathe out. That is all about the respiration, right? <clears throat> now, there is a slippery fluid-like substance <clears throat> which is secreted by some specialized glands and that fluid is known as mucus. You would have often seen that sometimes when you catch cold, what happens? There is a fluid-like structure which starts flowing through your nose, right? So what is that fluid-like structure? So that I'm talking about that fluid-like structure which is secreted by specialized glands which are present inside the respiratory tract. Now this fluid-like structure is known as mucus. Now, what is the role of the mucus? This mucus actually protect the lungs by trapping the foreign materials that enter it. When we breathe, we might breathe in some materials which are harmful to the body. So now, if there is nothing to prevent that material from going inside the lungs, then what will happen? Those foreign materials can damage the lungs. Correct? But because of the presence of those fluid-like structure called mucus, what happens? The mucus actually blocks those materials. So the mucus will prevent those materials from entering the lungs. So in particular, now this mucus mostly works through nose during breathing. So when we breathe, so the mucus will stop the foreign particles. Now what happens with the cilia? Now what happens if you have the cilia? The cilia actually are the hair-like structures which keep moving. Now, as the cilia moves, this movement helps to move the mucus and sweeps the mucus away from the nostrils and takes it towards the back of the throat. So, where do you have your nostrils? Maybe somewhere here, right? So, when you breathe in, what happens? You breathe in like this, right? So, whatever you breathe in, that goes in like this. So, now somewhere here, Inside you have the mucus glands. The mucus glands are those glands which actually secrete mucus, right? So that mucus will be some fluid-like structure which will stop which will stop the foreign particles from entering. Now, where will this mucus go? So the mucus also needs to go away from the nostrils, otherwise, it will block the air also to get in. So we will not be able to breathe. Right? So now the cilia which is present, the cilia keeps moving and because of the movement of the cilia, so the cilia acts like a brush like structure, right? So if you move a brush, you can sweep things, right? You would have seen your uh, maid cleaning your house with the help of a broomstick, right? So what does she do? They are thread like hair like structures with that she just cleans the floor. So similarly the cilia when as it moves it will sweep the mucus and it will take it away from the nose and it will sweep it towards the back of the throat. So it will take it towards the back of the 
throat. Now, as it goes towards the back of the throat, what happens? There is nothing to block the air which is coming through your nostrils. So again, you can breathe in and again, the foreign particles will be trapped by mucus and the mucus will again be swept to the back of the throat. So that is how cilia helps in sweeping the mucus away from the nostrils and take it towards the back of the throat. So thus it prevents the mucus from running down the nose. Now what happens when you catch cold? Now when what happens is that the cilia doesn't perform its function well when we catch cold. Now the cilia stops working. When the cilia stops working, there is nobody to sweep the mucus away from the nostrils. As a result, what happens? The mucus starts flowing down the nose and we start feeling uncomfortable, right? And sometimes that mucus also get infected due to bacterial infection or something. So that time, the thing, that time things become little worse and when you have to take antibiotics and only then you get rid of the bacterial infection, right? So you understand why do we have a ciliated columnar epithelium in the respiratory tract? Because the cilia plays a very specific function. The cilia actually helps to move the mucus. I'll write it here so that it helps you to remember. So the purpose of cilia, what does it do? It sweeps the mucus away from the nostrils towards the back of the throat, right? And what is mucus? Now, mucus is a slippery fluid-like substance. What does it do? It blocks foreign materials from entering the lungs from entering the lungs so that is the purpose of mucus so now you understand the significance of cilia and why do we have ciliated simple columnar epithelium in the respiratory tract so now you understand why we have ciliated epithelium why do we have columnar epithelium because columnar epithelium helps in secretion helps in absorption and also gives a lot of protection. So that is why we have simple columnar ciliated epithelium in the respiratory tract. So with this we ended our discussion on simple epithelium. We have discussed all the three types simple squamous, simple cuboidal and simple columnar. Correct? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.